So with season three reloaded, we got a new seasonal camo event refresh with a trophy hunt update. And today I want to run down some tips on how to best achieve and unlock all the associated camos. Now, I fully am aware that this is a rather simple event, easily done with playtime. But for those who haven't completed it just yet, want some camos on top of what they already have and to complete the mastery camo here for season three reloaded, I wanted to offer some advice on the best ways to accomplish this in the most time efficient manner as possible. It took me roughly two and a half to three hours total of playtime the day of the update. So it's easily obtainable just got to commit to it and have a game plan. So today, as we go along, drop your thoughts down below on if you have any further tips you would like to add to this. What do you think of this camo and anything in between? If you enjoyed the video, you'll find it at all insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD, as well as other FPS content here on the channel. I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage, but more on them a little later. For now, let's jump into the best ways to unlock these camos in as time efficient manner as possible. So firstly, starting out, let's start with some basic stuff. What should you be playing here to end up getting this? Now, of course, there are some very big and obvious ones here at this shipment 24 seven shoot house 24 seven or like this week when publishing this shoot the ship is the combination mosh pit that we ended up having where you have shipment as well as shoot house in that 24 seven. But it's not just one of those. Those are, of course, your big three that I'd say here that you want to look out for, although they're not always going to be there. So in that case, other playlists you can end up playing that are pretty good on offer are 10 v 10 for a personal favorite for me. And then an additional one is face off. For me, it's more so coming down to a matter of what is the most amount of kills that I can get in in the shortest amount of time possible. Usually things like domination outside of specific featured playlists, hard point, kill confirmed. Those are your sort of basic ones. But if you have stuff that you're guaranteed on smaller maps, like say shipment, like say face off, even though unfortunately it's only 3v3, we haven't seen any 4v4 or upwards of 6v6 like we saw within Black Ops Cold War this year. But it is something that still offers more chaos on smaller maps in that regard. And same thing with 10v10. A lot of the 10v10 maps, unfortunately, are more so kind of just it feels right to have 10v10 on those maps because they are larger. 6v6 doesn't really match up. But those are the playlists that I would highly recommend here for that shipment shoot house, shoot the ship, if at all available. If not, 10v10 and face off. If none of those are on offer, just your standard domination, hard point, and kill confirmed can all end up working as well. Now, beyond that, outside of what we end up seeing in regards to the challenges themselves, a lot of them are pretty straightforward, but some can end up using a little bit of clarity or some help to complete them in a more efficient manner. Probably one of the leadoffs here in regards to what could use a little bit of help or some advice and tips comes down to the marksman and sniper rifles, because outside of those challenges, long shot challenges, you have basic standard straightforward things like your operator kills with assault rifles, your headshots, your operator kills from behind with melees, three kills without dying 20 times. Long shots, there is a little bit of the method to the madness here at this. For this, your long shot lengths for both marksman rifles and sniper rifles are 38 meters and 50 meters respectively. So marksman rifles, you can get done on say 10v10 maps. Sniper rifles, you're going to be a little bit more limited with 6v6 maps. 10v10 can get it done, but I do a lot of those in ground war. For these on screen, we'll showcase a little bit of some long shot guides that we ended up putting up for our platinum guide way back a couple of months ago, whenever we were talking about mastery camo unlocks and guides for that. These are going to be some of your sort of tack maps from around these 66 maps on where you can end up getting those locations if you so choose to do so. Ground war again, being a bit more open in regards to how much space there is in between kills. Of course, you're going to see a lot more open space from flag to flag as opposed to domination matches of A to B or something like that. So you're going to be able to get a lot of sniper shots done in there. But if you don't want to play Ground War, these maps and what you'll see on screen with these tack maps listed with the locations and distances for each category, that can help you out a bit more in regards to knowing where you should go, where you should post up, and where you should hopefully be able to farm some of these kills. Now, unfortunately, with long shots, one thing that you're going to have to bear in mind is that it's oftentimes a pretty slow paced experience. A lot of the times you really do just kind of have to hold one angle because there's not a lot of locations, especially in 6v6 maps for sniper rifles that can end up getting 50 meters unobstructed in view. So there's going to be some cases where it's going to play out a little slow. Just know that going into it. Now, as for specific builds, there's not really a whole ton needed for snipers. Marksmen, if you can prioritize damage range, that's something you might want to consider just because you get a bit more hit markers to the extremities, to the stomach and locations like that as opposed to sniper rifles but it is something that for the most part any basic build that you want you can get the job done in a lot of those situations 
Now, moving on to the next category that I want to touch on is just headshots. This is something that, yes, you can do this with any build you really want to for the weapons that require it, which is the battle rifles. For this, I'd recommend any sort of optic that has some sort of red dot with it. My personal favorite is the Cronin Mini Pro. That's just a simple red dot. Your Cronin Mini Dot, SC Mini, Slimline Pro, AMOP V4. All those are really good, especially the AMOP V4 for medium to longer range here. But just utilize some of those optics to take advantage of that precision that it can't afford. Even if you think you're really good with the iron sights, which is very possible. A lot of the iron sights really aren't too bad in this game. But at a medium range and further for your weapons, it never hurts to have that added help to know where you're going to be aiming and where those shots are going to be landing. So that's one thing that I would highly recommend as well. Beyond that, if I could suggest some weaponry, I would highly recommend either the Cronin Squall or the TAC V, simply because those I think are the easiest ones to use out of the battle rifle category. They're fully automatic and they pack an absolute punch. So you'll be able to end up getting those headshots done in one to two shots if you're accurate, depending on the range, and you'll be able to breeze through these. Mounted kills for the LMGs. This is another one that's kind of tedious, kind of just more so annoying than anything else, but you can play this a little bit better if you kit certain weapons accordingly. For me, I'd highly recommend a sort of mobile RPK build. The RPK is a weapon that, unlike other LMGs, it does have the capability to be something you can run and gun with. A lot of the LMGs in this game, you're going to be bogged down with the weight of the weapon, but the RPK, you can play it almost like an assault rifle, simply because it is something that you can rival that of like the basic AK-47. Before this, I'd end up running a build of the Cronin Mini Pro Optic, the Cas-12 584mm barrel, the True Tac Grip, 40 round magazine, and then for me, I ran the Core BP-2 bipod to give you that mounting ability that whenever you go prone, you can end up mounting so that you don't have to be just limited to any sort of cover and just staying there. You can end up utilizing the mounting mechanic in a lot more locations and you don't limit yourself in that regard. One thing that I will say is that it's very easy to go prone with these bipods, mount up, and then jump right out of it once you get those kills necessary. You can end up easily knocking these out in a game or two, especially whenever there's shipment, shoot house, or shoot the ship available in those weekly featured playlists. For your shotguns and those hip fire kills you end up wanting to get, just make sure you prioritize your attachments that do have that hip fire accuracy. Additionally, you'll also want to max out where possible the sprint to fire speed. ADS, you can end up adjusting sometimes. Sprint to fire speed and ADS is a bit more hand in hand, but again, you're not really trying to go for ADS kills. That's counterproductive at this point when going for hip fire kills. So the sprint to fire speed, the more you can max that out, the more you'll be able to run around the map, but instantaneously get those shots off in that hip fire position. Position. You don't have to take that ADS and that extra half second or so sometimes that it seems like it takes, but instead you can just be sprinting around and shoot at that point whenever you max that kind of stuff out. Beyond that, the three operator kills without dying 20 times with SMGs, that's kind of just basic. Just stay alive, you don't really need too many tips on that. And then melees for the operator kills from behind, that's the only one that I think outside of that can really be something that you can give some tips here for. For this, I'd highly recommend stuns and just, well, luck. If you have the ability to end up playing on shipment, you'll get this done in no time. Couple of matches. The kills from behind tracking is kind of finicky. If the player is even like just at a 90 degree angle to you or slightly turned, it doesn't quite necessarily count it as a kill from behind. You have to be almost in execution range at that point to end up getting it to count. But if shipment is not around, stuns is definitely something where it comes into handy on things like shoot house or other 6v6 maps because they are a bit larger, of course, but with respawns, you're oftentimes not going to be spawning behind players. So you're going to kind of have to make that time to wrap around and get behind enemies, which can be tedious. And again, if you start dying over and over again, it seems like you're just running to die and you don't even get the opportunity. So if you can get stuns, you can end up stunning a player and getting behind them at that point where they don't have the ability to turn or pivot really to end up taking you out. So that's what I would recommend and kind of rounds out the tips for the weapons and categories overall. Now, is the overall challenge reward worth it? Here's the thing. I think that both the Dark Bones as well as the Skull Eater camos are cool, but... As we talked about with all the rewards of Season 3 Reloaded, I feel like this is kind of scaled accordingly in that cool factor. Like the Boeing Blossoms camo from Season 2 Reloaded looks really good, I think. Much better than the Skull Leader, but the challenges for that were also significantly more tedious. Didn't take just two and a half to three hours of game time to complete. It took a couple more on top of that, simply because you were going for headshots with every single category. So it was something that was a bit more tedious. You ended up getting a lot of kills unless you were super precise. Whereas this, a lot of it, it's pretty straightforward you can play it for these challenges and for the 535 kills that it takes to end up at minimum getting this camo unlocked you can actually do it 
pretty closely to that number. I'd probably say that you're going to be around 600 to 650, whereas going for headshots, you might have been a little more over that by comparison. So it is something that I think is definitely a nice camo. Is it the best? Not necessarily, but it is something that if you want it, it's easy to go for. And again, we just need to really commit to it. So that is what we're going to call it. Just wanted to fill you guys in on some hopefully helpful tips if you want to go for this, if you have not done so already, to make this something that's a bit easier here for you. And honestly, this is kind of where we're at with the rest of the guides here. I think this is the last thing I had out of the Season 3 Reloaded content and events that we've really had guides and tutorials for. So just wanted to round it out, be thorough, make sure I touched all the bases. So that said, that's what we're going to call it. Before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage the best blue light glasses on the market. I've worked with these guys for two years now at this point, and they have been absolutely one of the best, if not the best, partner that I've had that helps in terms of my daily productivity. They're the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market. And if you guys want to learn more, links in the description below where you can check out the science, take a look at the clinical studies they have for their effectiveness. And if you guys want to pick something up for yourself, you can use code ESPRESSO to get 10% off your entire order. So if interested, links in the description below, but that's what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like the dark bones or the skull eater camos here within season three reloaded? Do you think the challenges are too easy, too hard, too tedious, not tedious enough? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the Video, you'll find it Adeline Seifel. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD and other FPS titles here in relation to content. I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.